today we're going to look at the term plebeian, often shortened to pleb. Plebeians or plebs were Roman citizens, and they're often disparaged for being of very low status. However, this is not actually the case. Plebs were much higher than slaves, for example, or even people who were not Roman citizens. They were often looked down upon, especially in Republican times, by the much higher in status patrician class. Ancient Roman houses in the city were made of timber, mud brick, and later of concrete. Houses in the city were called insulae and were six to seven stories high. Hello, are you a Roman ci citizen? Yes, sir. Drop and give me five push-ups. Whatever you say. In early ancient Roman history, women were strictly under the control of their husband or guardian. They had very few rights. Hey, you, my wife, what are you doing out of? I'm allowed to leave. I can go shopping at the temple. No, 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 no. Today, I expect you to take care of the house and do all the chores. But I was kind of thinking since you'd be home, you could take care no, of the house. No, you, you have no say in this family. I run it. You, back home. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Procrastinators Podcast. I'm your host for the day, the best guy ever, and I'm here with all the guys once again. First up is Digibro. I fucked up the first recording. I'm as bad as Ben Saint at Patreon.com. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, ben Saint, introduce yourself. It's 10.50 a.m., <laughs> I'm hungover, and I have not been awake at this are? time since I was a baby. <laughs> and hippo shit. Hip replacement. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, okay, let's uh, get right into the news. Our topic for the day was plebs. Plebs, however you want to pronounce it, that's what it's about. It's this, 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 this word defined by Urban Dictionary as... To bring it back, to bring back the old tradition, one whose inferior intelligence results in them making a complete, complete, I did that again, just like I did last time, what the fuck, making a complete tit face out of themselves in public. This fails to go into the minutia of the, of the details, plebe. So it's a Roman word that was like the opposite of patrician, this meaning one who's an idiot and a dumbass and I don't give a shit about. Roman, well, is that I mean, really what it means, idiot dumbass? Or is it more No, I mean, specific? patrician meant like the educated uh, aristocracy, like aristocratic class of, of the Roman society. Would it be akin to peasant? Else. Like you're just a that's peasant right. guy. It's, yeah, it's that's right. That's pretty much thing. exactly well, right. Well, urban diction... Well, that, that... I mean, the, that's not how it's used now. And that urban no. dictionary definition just says means it, that uh, it's stupid. Yeah. And that's that's definitely wrong. You know, I think I think I just realized <laughs> that plebe was the wrong word to for us to all cling to because Philistine yeah. is what we really mean. Like the oh, way yeah. it, the way plebe yeah. is used now is what Philistine actually means, which is someone who I, doesn't understand um, the arts and is ignorant of lacks uh, appreciation. Well, for you know, them. plebe yeah. plebe apply, uh, implies some uh, some lack of appreciation yeah, yeah, as well. Yeah, but that's not what know? it means originally. Although I think I guess we use yeah, plebe more true. as noob though. Like I don't think it necessarily implies that you that you can't appreciate the arts is that you're just Well, too when I new. when I view I when I see the thing of this word, I picture two people standing next to each other. A patrician who's who's a gay art student at uh, <laughs> Rhode Island School of of Design at, at RISD. And the the uh, plebe I think of as Katy Perry uh, posting rare pepes in her tweets. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's exactly right. Um, okay, so I, I, I wanted to say, I the, wanted, yeah, I What's think um, one of the things about plebe is that it's usually mm -hmm. used against somebody after they've ha a formulated an opinion on something. Like you wouldn't, if That's somebody true. says, "I haven't seen that show yet," you don't call them a plebe. You tell them to watch it, and if they say, eh, "Yeah," then you call them a plebe. Uh, that that you know that's, that's an why I don't think that it, I was gonna get it doesn't into. quite I wouldn't call equate to new for not wanting to watch something. I'd only call them a plebe if they watched it and were like, eh, "I thought that this part was out of character," and I'd say, "You fucking plebe! You don't yeah. understand yeah. the character." See, only okay, I let's, let's just that's talk where about I would that right say now. Philistine, though, that's where I'd pull that one out. Well, they're they're basically interchangeable on that <laughs> level. So yeah, just to just to set it like this is a to do, it's distinct. We were thinking that this might be a little too similar to normies, but then I thought about it. Uh, and they really are totally distinct. And I've got the perfect example: the uh, the as we story as we in the storytelling game like to call it the inciting incident for this 
for this podcast was a conversation I had with my roommate, who's coincidentally also named Ben, um, who I now hate. Who you accidentally uh, called instead of actual Ben. Uh, oh, yeah, this morning 20 I was minutes calling ago Ben. To get on I the called podcast. the other one. He was still asleep, yeah. <laughs> okay, so so we were, we, were, we were talking, we were driving down the road, we were going to lunch, um, and we... Uh, the the topic of just anime came up, which I don't talk about with these guys too much, because frankly they don't know nearly as much as me, so it's kind of boring for me to talk about. It's like, have you seen Cowboy Bebop? Yes, yes, I've seen Cowboy Bebop. I like it. Um, <laughs> but but the, yes, fifteen years you ago, know, I was a yeah. child actually. When so we were talking about that, and uh, to my <clears throat> amazing surprise, he had actually watched Konosuba last season. He had watched it on like Netflix or something. Wow. And this, I was shocked. I was shocked. Um, because, but you know, th- and so this guy, I'm starting to think, wow, maybe he, maybe this guy does get it. Cause like he, he wears this Final Fantasy seven shirt sometimes he plays a lot of video. We talk about that's games and shows know. and he's got decent. Yeah, that's right. If you're wearing a Final Fantasy seven shirt, you're a smart individual. So I'm, I'm thinking this guy's got some pretty decent taste. But then when I asked him what he thought about Konosuba, my favorite show of last year, um, this or year. The, the last season, whatever he was, he just said, meh. It was okay. I he thought Kono this, Suba this is, was just this, okay. He thought it was meh. He thought it was just okay. And this is what really did it when he said it was like Sword Art Online only boring. <laughs> these are the words. <laughs> these are the words he said to me. These are the words he said to me. And he didn't know he was signing his fucking death warrant <laughs> when he said those fucking words. It's like he put a curse <sighs> on himself. So I then tried to explain to him why oh Konosuba God. I mean I didn't even get into the Sword Art Online Jesus. thing I just tried to explain why Konosuba was better than what he thought because he was he was bringing up all these points and and this is where the pleb factor comes in he was bringing up all these points about how like dude it's just another game it's just another show where a dude gets like sucked into a video game world and like gets all these powers and meets a bunch of girls and they have these silly adventures and the lighthearted tone is well, funny at times but isn't as interesting as something like a death battle like in Sword Art Online and this so is exactly why Sword Art Online is I'm not gonna you know what you can uh, yes, you know this he, is it's a big problem you know what he's it's doing the problem he, in the universe he, what? he's just he's just He's just latching onto the tangible details of the fact that they both exactly. take That's place right. in a game. So That's he's right. like, "Oh, they're the similar shows." That's what and, most and people do. And the reason do. for that, and the reason why he's doing that, is because he doesn't have as broad an experience with these. He doesn't. He yeah. doesn't understand what Konosuba is trying to do, right. and that's what makes him a plebe. And that's why plebes are the yeah. biggest problem in the universe. I'll agree and that's with you there. Where I want to start, yeah. I would agree <laughs> with everything. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I, I'm just, I'm, I'm imagining myself in this scenario, and my first was reaction, if he said yeah. that to me, I know the first thing I'd do would be to burst out laughing. Like, hysterical yeah. hyena yeah. laughter would be my first response. I mean, and then also... I would probably insult him and his intelligence, because I'm a dick, and... I don't have mm-hmm. that, you know, when, when I'm on YouTube, I can like type the comment and delete it. But in person, yeah. it's just like the first thing that comes to mind is like, <laughs> ha, you're wrong. You're like, you know, <laughs> yep. and then yep. I might, depending on how he took the insults, I would then go into my 50 point breakdown of why he's wrong. <laughs> yes, that's, that was the plan. I mean, that also implies that he didn't find Sword Art Online boring. N- nestled in, right. nestled it's like, in it's there. It's like one of his favorite shows. He says it's like one of his favorite, favorite shows he's seen. So, oh. you know, we got, there's a lot to sort Nate, out. Nate, I'm curious, dude, have you, you actually know? seen Sword Art Online? Nope. nope. I've seen like episode one. I have never Half seen of it or something. any of Sword Art Online. Ever. So you but guys, you guys I could believe... be considered a little unfair. Uh, yeah. Um, no, oh yeah, I, no, I don't because have any, I don't care. I, I, I don't. It, I don't even care about his opinion on Sword Art Online. I'm, I only care about his opinion on Konosuba, right. which I know for a fact is a great show. And to, to say it's meh, it's, it's unforgivable. <laughs> like Sword Art Online, only boring. Yeah, I just. Yeah, if you guys had seen Sword Art Online, you'd understand that what particularly bothers me about that statement is that Sword mm-hmm. Art Online is. Fucking boring. Like, mm-hmm. by far, far and away, my biggest criticism of Sword Art Online is that it's unbelievably, insufferably boring. Because it has, yeah. like, this really strong start where the first two episodes set up this death game thing and, like, set up all mm-hmm. these high stakes and stuff. And, like, episode three is dramatic. And then after that, the entire rest of the show is nothing. Nothing happens. <laughs> it's fucking boring. Nothing matters. 
I think it's I think shit. he's one of these guys who is is satisfied in a show by it being um and we don't we don't need to talk about Ben forever. We can let him off the hook eventually, but <laughs> I think he's one of these guys who like like the show is about this death game where like the stakes are really high. Like that that's right. true. And so I think that's kind of enough for them to be like carried through Absolutely. the show just like you know sort of keeping think that in mind, about, you know? About people who who they don't see these sort of like the boring flaws and stuff is that they they yeah, think they think of, they think that like thing to do. if there's like do- boring talky scenes or whatever there's just exposition they've seen that in other things that they kind of liked and they just assume that mm-hmm. for a show to be good it has to have you know lulls in in excitement well, you know, and stuff I, I and they don't the, realize yeah. that there's a difference between something being like interesting but right. like low energy mm-hmm. And something just being really boring, they just yeah. assume that yeah. that's what they're I, I supposed think I to know do. Where, I think I know where it comes from, and you know, because mm-hmm. th- the red letter media videos on the Mister Plinkett reviews of the Star Wars prequels, I think, were yeah. integral yeah. to this. Because when I was a little kid, I never saw the mind numbing action that the fanboys yeah. crave. Well, I yeah. never saw the original Star Wars as a kid, and like I mm. saw it, like uh, I think I saw parts of the first one around the time the Phantom Menace came out. But I saw Phantom Menace mm-hmm. like probably in theaters. And I was fucking bored to tears by the by that movie, right? I thought it was yeah, the most boring yeah. thing I'd ever seen. And for a long time, I believed that I just thought, like, space and politics were boring. You know, like, the idea <laughs> of, like, space politics was the I most boring thing I could see why that movie would do that. Me. Right. And I would – I believed that all the way up until adult – like, I, I've never been into sci-fi. I've never been into uh, political mm. stuff until I played Mass Effect at, like, age 20, and it yeah, like completely yeah. changed my outlook on both things, and now that's like my favorite genre is political sci-fi. And then I yeah. watched the Plinkett reviews, and I realized that political sci-fi was never boring. The movie is just terrible. And like yep. as a yep. kid, I thought I just didn't understand what they were talking about because it was too intel, like it was over my head, you know. Mm-hmm, but then the mm-hmm. reality of it is that it was just bad. It was just badly written, and that's why I didn't understand it. Or, I'll tell you, yeah, it's, it's, you know, there's like um, mm-hmm. there's the Fucking, uh, uh, people, uh, 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 kill me. (laughs) (laughs) I think think what you're trying to, or what you were at least trying to say last time, was that people who watch those scenes in a show like Sword Art Online Uh think it's necessary for that to be there, you know? Like, they think... Yeah, what I was going to say is that people, they sometimes feel like, um, they they might recognize that something is, like, boring and stuff, but they're, they're scared of, like whining about it they don't want to be that person who says yeah. oh i didn't like it and then everyone com- turns around and says it's, but it's, it's a this great kind movie of american anti-intellectualism like, oh, they man, just they just has, accept you know? that it's like really Dude. It's yeah, good, com- even though they find it boring. They say, "No, it's a good. It's when it's you, boring, but yeah. that's okay." Yeah. You know, that's sort of. When mm-hmm. you complain about something, you can be you, people can find it a real buzzkill. I have a friend who, like, yeah, yeah, he asked me. He said, "Ben, you're the coolest guy ever. What do you <laughs> think about?" the new uh, Fooly Cooly sequels coming out. Oh, boy, and, here we go. And, you know, uh, he, he sa- I didn't see this at the time because I couldn't see through just the red v- veneer of rage yeah. that came yeah. over my eyes. <laughs> and, and I just went on this fucking bender about how it's all just an a evil bender. fucking cor- oh, <laughs> oh. It's this, it's a, how it's an evil corporate money grab and everyone that is pre- responsible should be in hell and how I pray every night and yeah. I pray every night for another tsunami to come and finish the fucking job and wipe out Japan <laughs> just wipe out Japan Japan's done some good stuff but you know it needs it's it needs to, to die right it now before it ruins mm-hmm. its honor by destroying the best thing it ever made fully coolly with a sequel and uh, right on, and I, you know, I could see just just you know the childlike wonderment went out of his eyes. This was a guy who really <laughs> yeah. liked Fooly Cooly and was like, "I liked Fooly Cooly. I can't wait for the sequel." And as I went on, I this, I killed his joy. I killed I, his joy. I'm so with you, and I saw this so clearly when I made my Final Fantasy VII video, which is you know very divisive among the people who've seen it. Where just just to to raise the idea that the thing that you're talking about, like, because my whole life. Me and my friend Colin, when we were kids, made a pledge that, like, we would do whatever it takes to, because, like, we were young, we didn't have any money, to, like, get whatever money was required to buy the console or whatever we needed to play the Final Fantasy VII remake when it came out. And that was from a time (laughs) when Square Enix... 
I mean, uh, yeah, I know. At the time, we didn't know if that was even going to be fucking possible. But we just, like, uh, it, it was it was something that we just blindly believed would be the best thing ever because it was, like, our favorite game, and <laughs> we trusted Square Enix, and we didn't understand how these things happen. But now that we're older, I mean, I don't know about him, uh, but I understand that's just not how things are going to pan out. It's not going to be, you know what i expect it to be it's going to be you know this whole this whole other thing it's going to be its own thing and and you go, you only know that if you have the perspective of someone who like understands how these things happen so that's where being a plebe will shoot you in the foot cuz you encourage bad things to happen without even knowing you're doing it here's a thing you know? that i think is not necessarily the same as being and i'm a aware plebe. this comes off as the most condescending podcast that i've ever done <laughs> definitely. <laughs> definitely i think normies was pretty close pretty up there yeah. Yeah. uh here's a thing that's not necessarily the same as being a plebe but i think it can be related uh, a mm-hmm. lot of people don't want to see anything negatively they want to be excited yeah. about things and they yeah. want to like yeah. things mm-hmm. i think we could uh, just make this about the the uh the how people don't appreciate negativity enough that yeah. could be like the theme well, of this you know i've you know? got I, I think if i wanted to speak in defense of like uh, plebeness is like ignorance is bliss right like that's right that's right. The less you think about it, the more you can enjoy it. And I think that... Uh, even though that's not even true, but from a certain perspective, Well, I think yes. there's a double-edged sword with, with being a pleb, which is that if you just like everything in, like, the same... Because I, I see this sometimes, where there's people who, who aren't very critical. I know where you're going. People who yeah. give everything, like, a 7 out of 10. Like, everything... Mm-hmm. Or, or a 10 out of 10. Like, they give everything these baseline... Like, it's either amazing or it's good. But then the difference between those isn't even that strong. You know? Like, yeah, yeah. I feel like when people aren't very critical of stuff, then everything is just kind of the same. And you, they kind of watch something and they go, oh, it was great. And then for all time, they just go, oh, it was great. But they never experience more. Whereas mm-hmm. for me, like, because I'm so critical of some stuff, then the stuff that I do like, I like way more, you know, like, yeah, for something I, yeah, I to mean. break down all those barriers of things that it can do wrong, you know, for for a show to just like not fuck up in any way and mm-hmm. and then to just excel in certain ways is like mind blowing to me. It's like I can't yeah. believe this is really happening, that genius and beauty exists in the world. You know, it's like, <laughs> yeah, it, you know, you know what I am? I am genius. I'm Matt. Genius and beauty I, is like a rare Pepe. Yeah, hosted by yes. Katy Perry for That's all right. to enjoy. I can't believe. Yeah. Anyway, I'm like I'm like Matt Damon from uh, Good Will Hunting. No, actually, I'm not Matt Damon. I'm like uh, Skarsgård. I'm the I'm the professor who was who was like who discovered Matt Damon, the I genius seen kid. Good Will Hunting. So. Well, it's 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 like this. It's like there's only a few men in the world who can tell the difference between you and me, but I'm one of them. And you know, it's like, it's like you gotta know, you gotta be able to see the difference between Sword Art Online and fucking Konosuba if you wanna survive meeting me, cause I'll fucking <laughs> kill you in if you say world. that shit to me again. <laughs> I would, um, That's consider right. myself right. a bit of a pleb in a, in a, in a few ways. I mean, Just, everyone's a pleb in because, some way, but, yeah. like, I try to be, it's not that I try to be optimistic all the time. I actually enjoy being really critical mm. on things that people like, but that's just because I'm, uh, uh, <laughs> what's the word? Contrarian, yeah. Contrarian, yeah. But I, I do like just giving things, letting things, um, you know, just, I'm, I'm accepting of things mm-hmm. that, like, people in this chat in this in this group really yeah. all rag on like i'm I still like, like kind of like nerd writer and all that I like stuff nerd writer. well i know you do but like <laughs> everyone don't. else <laughs> i don't care for him personally it's just and it's just even though i even That's though i hate thing, dark souls 2 a lot i still don't think i hate as much as you do now digi with your oh, I don't think, sure. I don't nobody think hates, as, much hates as, as much as i do yeah uh, you've yeah. overtaken me there i don't know I, yeah. I i just i consider myself a pleb maybe because as a defense mechanism well, like, I, mean, I, d- I don't want to be. I don't want to. Well, here's mm-hmm. the thing. Yeah, I don't know. Here's what I think. Uh, there's no such thing as plebs because nothing in this world is truly worth appreciating at all. Uh, <laughs> all right. So some people think they have a real good nose or taste or whatever for beer, uh, but they're yeah. wrong. They've been tricked mm. by big by big <laughs> alcohol companies. <laughs> Uh, the culture of beer is one that's like, oh, this... I mean, beers do taste different, but none of them taste good. Uh, and and I, all art is like that. None of it's really good. You've just been tricked into thinking you like it. 
uh, by the media and by marketing. So plebes are <laughs> to a certain extent. No, no completely. I, I like Guinness. I think Guinness tastes good now. Now that I've drank it so many times, I, I just guess like there, to drink I it. guess there are better and worse beers. I but don't. I, don't I, like I know what you're saying. For the most part, it's about. I mean, you you could like anyone. Like people like getting uh, tied to the railing and raped. You know, if you do it enough times, <laughs> you know, they learn to like it. They learn to like it. <laughs> do they? That's <laughs> yeah. Are you sure? I, know, I, I can conf- I can confirm that. Yeah. No. Oh. oh good. Yeah. God. Mm-hmm. You, um, so we've just we've just all we've just all got <laughs> Stockholm syndrome to art, you know. Art and culture just yes, have us all fucking I agree. hostage. Well, uh, you know, it's funny. I actually, I I actually think that a lot of people like like a lot of stuff out of Stockholm syndrome because of mm-hmm. like. Oh, what? Mm-hmm. Absolutely, I'm not kidding about that. Yeah, like I think like I, that's essentially the argument we were having about Sword Art Online, and uh, like that those first two episodes were so gripping that people will watch the whole fucking show and no matter how stupid and boring it gets they that's why i like attack on titan Uh, that's what attack on titan did to me i think that that's right uh, just hooked me really hard at the beginning i think like Mm -hmm. the greatest cultural example of that in recent years was the walking dead that like it had this really strong first season but that was only like six episodes and then it's just been Mm -hmm. like painfully boring for like Five fucking seasons. Yeah, but it's gotcha. but it was enough, man. That's all they need to do. And I want to see got how them. it ends or whatever. Right? Yeah. Who gives? Even a shit? though, they like, all fucking even, die. Even everyone like, dies. Like my Spoiler parents, alert. who are not like sp- particularly critical or picky, and even they, like, by season three, were like, "This show's fucking dumb as fuck." But they're still hmm. watching it because they can't yeah. not. You know. Yeah, yeah now, they, they now they're invested. invested. That's what they do. They get you invested in the characters, and they, they numb your, like, critical thinking, and then they're just, like, find out. And, like, it, it, at first, they, they tap into, like, your... The, there, there's, like, a base human reaction to, like, oh, shit, things are happening to these people. I got... Are they gonna be okay? They get you with that, and then they build a little bit of, like, uh, narrative weight into it. They build, like, a thread line. They make you relate to these people, and they get you invested in them personally. And then, at that point, they can do whatever the fuck they want. It doesn't matter. You're already yeah. got... That's it's it. what happened to me with um, Naruto and Bleach. I still read them, even yeah. though I don't like... Well, Naruto's finished, but I read it but all the way the to the end, even though, like... Out. Oh, well, who cares? Yeah, I don't, no, need, to, I don't need to get invested in the new characters. I've, I've, I've done my bit. I've seen how it ends. Yeah, yeah. And now I can never look at it again. And it's I'm free. glad I don't have this impulse, because for me, I, I guess it's because... It's very all or nothing with me because most shows aren't over when I start watching them, and then I catch up, and then I just never watch it again. So, well, <laughs> reading like Naruto no wasn't too too much of like a hassle. Like I would always go to the the manga sites to read the new One Piece chapter, and there's usually a Naruto there as well. Yes, there is. I, so I, I do. Just... Ha- I do have. I do have the strong urge to finish like anything that I start. Uh, but um, mm. like to balance that out is I don't start things very often. It takes it takes multiple separate people independently re- uh, recommending me something for me to even think about watching it. Uh, I gotta I gotta ask: Is this weird that I think the reason I don't feel the need to like continue is that I feel like no matter what, what happens is either they die or they don't die. Like <laughs> yes, that's weird. That's no, always okay. what it comes down to. Is I mean, either they it, die or they don't die by the but end. But that's of the life. Story. You know. You know why that, that's I? Just yeah, life. That, that is that is and, just life. And but adding on you... to that, they will eventually die. So like, even then, none of it fucking matters. You know. This is the part where I showed up in the call. Well, um, I wanted to go back to the the sort of the idea that people are afraid of be- like um being judged for being critical. Mm-hmm. And I want to bring in the the new the new Brady Heron original term from the Hello Internet podcast, ah. uh, cheer pressure, which is where there's pressure to be constantly, um, constantly positive to all and things. Did you, you say sheer pressure? Cheer pressure, like oh, you got to be pressure. cheering for them. Like you can't possibly, like um, like we've all had people attack us for being like oh god against... i'm seeing red you just reminded me of the thing the angriest i've ever been okay uh, this <laughs> that's totally relevant because yesterday yeah. when digi did his fuck he did a video that was like criticizing uh like boring taste in anime and this mother i swear i'm gonna fucking murder your whole family <laughs> anime i've never been more angry in my life that uh who are this you guy to? anime every guy... day is who he's talking all right to. like uh, it's not it's not him it's just 
like he he makes this response about how like Digi isn't allowed to criticize things because because he has a fucking platform people are going to not like the things that he says he doesn't like and that is not fucking allowed that's not allowed you can't do that you're spreading you're spreading a cancer you're spreading dislike of something that he likes oh my god fuck off you piece of shit i wish you were dead you're, that's the most retarded thing i've ever heard in my entire fucking life oh god i'm so mad <laughs> what so so this guy said that like it's irresponsible of you to say that things are bad because it'll make people like them less kind that's, of that's yeah, man that's what where what community have i heard that kind yeah, of argument i know in right? i know well, right? I mean, you know, exactly. wait 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 hold on what anime every day was saying was that you're judging people by their tastes but you would think that sh people shouldn't be judged by their taste at all it's not so much being judged by your taste it's being Digi didn't even judge anyone taste he says every fucking time that like yeah, you can like any it, show you want it's more like it's this if you're being inauthentic this is what that's it's the like fucking problem why doesn't he understand Look, what, so what it stupid. really is is being Man, is really evaluating stupid, huh? people's tastes like you look at your favorites and you go hmm it seems like you're into this kind of thing so it's not him saying some people have worse tastes than other people it's just saying He's just saying that me personally, some tastes bore me because I'm all, on 4chan yeah, all, all the time. Yeah, all it is is Digi saying he's bored. That's yeah, not and I, 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 I'm, I'm right statement. now looking at this reply I got to a comment on that video that was like, oh, why can't God. you just admit Digi bro fucked up? Why can't you just admit it that he, <laughs> he, he lapsed in judgment? <laughs> I'm going to give this guy a response. Judgment. You know what? I, I didn't I didn't want to bring this up, but it's out it's out now, so whatever. Yes, Nate, we congratulations. Can... You now have your first public beef in the anime community. I hope you <laughs> no, this is... Yeah, Fuck. great. I'll, I'll I go to I mean, look, I completely understand. I, I completely understand him out where the all these people are coming from because <laughs> like like, I didn't know he like, existed. Like, I, I understand in this where they're chat, from, in this chat wrong. where we do these calls, we shit yeah. on people's tastes all the time. But when we shit on people's mm -hmm. tastes, we don't mean it in the same way as some people mean it. When some people are like, if you like K-On, you're completely retarded. <laughs> that show has no substance whatsoever. Oh, I Certain wonder, people oh, like really that. Anime snob, actually. Yeah, so people like that, when they <laughs> Yours say that... Yours can almost compete with mine, but you have to have a shitty echo effect to I really think, make think, it so. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so you like gotta cup the mic. You gotta a... cup the mic. And then you gotta speed it up 10%. Okay. So, um, anyway... When he says that, it doesn't mean the same thing as when we are like, Ugh, why does such and such continue to shit on such and such thing that we like? When we say it, it means a different thing. You're just going to have to take our word for it, guys. You're just going to have to take our well, word for it. I'm going right? to have to, the reason that I, because <laughs> I know, Nate, you didn't like that in my response, I was overly fair to Andy You were so people. fair and it made me so mad. Reason, you should have ripped him apart. The only reason for that is the realization I had when I was watching his video, and he kind of makes this point. Um, that those shows that I'm talking about are mostly kind of obscure shows. And, like, I guess I, I think the, the problem is that from my perspective, all I see these – like, the only times I ever see these shows talked about <clears throat> is in fucking 3x3 three three threads. It's when people are yeah, putting them on their yeah. favorites list because they make you look really smart and cool. But then I thought about it, and I was like, no one's championing these on YouTube except for this guy. Like – like, anywhere else, for me, anywhere else on the internet, it's annoying to see, like, a million anime every day is going, oh, this show is so beautiful, and, and that makes it the best show that I've ever seen, you know? And I'm yeah. like, yeah, I fucking get it. But then I thought about it, and I'm like, well, there's no video of me on my channel going, hey, guys, go watch Anne of Green Gables because it's a classic, you know? <laughs> and so... That, yeah. If if okay, I but if I yeah, had more yeah. videos about those shows, then I would really feel like I like he completely deserved to be ragged on. Like, like look, that, guys, if you, you guys know, are just now hearing the, about this all this, the believe me, it, bleep, like if you're hearing yeah. us talk about this for the first time, it may sound like Digi made some video where he's like, "Hey, everyone, I'm here to tell you about who to not take seriously around here." It wasn't like that <laughs> at all. It was more like a thought experiment. <laughs> it was sort of like I don't know. It, you just have to. It, it's some, don't defend it. Don't defend it. It doesn't need a defense. It was just a fucking whatever. It was it just. Matter. like a thought experiment type of thing and i understand that people don't like understand the depth of where we're coming from like like i don't know like it's just kind of it was a video that wasn't meant to be watched by as many people as it was is really what it comes down to it's a video yeah. that has thirty thousand views that was just a random rambling i mean you did you did give it a really that's... clickbaity title and a thumbnail even i don't so... know why i did that because in retrospect <laughs> that made no sense because i did yeah. like i mean the title well, i had in mind yeah. from the beginning but like i did give it a thumbnail like ha 
this will get more clicks. And then I well, looked at it I and don't... I went, why did I want that to get more clicks? <laughs> I, I'm not sure I even agree with the uh, the argument that, like, I didn't intend this to be seen by more people. Because once you post it out, it's out. But, like, nonetheless, I, I think your points are this nothing room... to be argued. This well, reminds me. Well, here, here's the, here's my uh, thing about this is that like he's talking about a vague generalization, <laughs> and if you yeah. feel like you aren't like posturing with your opinions, then you aren't part of that group, and you don't have to like be defensive yeah. about it. Like he, if you feel like the you aren't part of that group, just then felt you aren't. He was part of this group so hard, which I mean is fair. Well, I, I did call literally out, call him being. A I know. Yeah. I, know. I mean, yeah. If you if you get called out, then you can make a response. What I, I told know. him I, was. You should have just made a response proving, like, uh, explaining yeah, I, why honestly, all your favorites are better also, than everything else. I also mm-hmm. thought that's what it was going to be. Like, when I clicked on the video, I was really hoping he was about to, like, play yeah. defense for the show. That would have made you look way stupider. when I saw that the video was only eight minutes long, I figured there was no way he could defend and, nine and choices. His response to me was that, uh, his response to me was, well, I have, I explain it all in my videos themselves. I'm like, oh, See, well. See, that's the problem. I don't want to hunt plan. down all of his videos, all right, so I'll just take his word for it. Let's Let's move this into a discussion. Of another okay. kind of pleb, right? Sure. And this is, I mean, once again, I'm just accusing anime every day of something. So I'm just, <laughs> I'm just stirring the pot even more. Whatever, but let like, him have it. I think that the fact that he thinks he's put up a defense of why those shows are on his list is exactly the problem of why I made that video in the first place. Because mm. he hasn't really, exp- like, not in any depth or meaningful way. He's yeah. talked a lot about how they're very well written and beautiful to look at, and the art design is really strong, you know. But is like, that really his voice? Yeah, he hasn't like, seen his videos. Yeah, that's sort of his voice. But like, he, I know he's capable of making analytical points because he's analyzed the Ghost in the Shell film and uh, the like and Arise. And made some great points in those videos, but most yeah, of those I like videos that. I love those are just videos. like that one. Most least. of those videos are like these are the top ten anime of 1990, and then he'll like just just describe. They're kind of like YMS reviews, <clears throat> where he's just like describing the fact yeah. that the show is good and not why mm-hmm. it's good, like in any specific kind of detail. And my problem with those three by threes is that so many of those shows, and this is what I was trying to get across about Ergo Proxy, is that like. Mm-hmm. I don't understand the appeal of Ergo Proxy, and no one has explained it to me well enough that I, like, get it, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah. And look, it yeah. is, it is like, proven that, in some fields at least, people will posture for an, uh, a sophisticated-looking opinion. I remember right. Jim Quisition talking about that in regards to certain features on video games, but also correlating it to coffee, how statistics show that, like, when people are interviewed, they say, oh, I like a... I like a rich, dark roast of coffee. But right, then buying yeah, habits suggest that people mostly buy milky, weak coffee. You know, it's right. it's not like... The very the very notion he's proposing that people don't just put things on there to look smart or cool is the most retarded thing I've ever heard look, in my life. Yeah. Like, even if, like, we're not... We, we love everyone, right? We're the most positive people ever, right? We're not saying <laughs> you're not right. a no, good person. We're not saying not. you're not a good person. We're extremely cynical, and that's the issue, is that well, I don't think he's cynical enough about it. Because I got a lot of responses We're just that saying like, we don't automatically Do you... dislike anyone for anything. I, like, right. like, I don't think it's as We're not saying you're a bad person. Be? We're not saying you're not allowed to watch yeah. anime, all right? I mean, I personally I... don't care about this whole boring taste thing, because I'm not on 4chan all the time. Just, just letting you know, like, please don't take it... Too seriously, it's just like a thought experiment or something. I don't know. I don't, I don't think I, it's don't as cynical it. as it could be because I think that when people make lists like that, or nine by nine, three by three was like that or whatever, it's not like they're setting out to deliberately deceive people. No. It's that it's it's that this is like the, what they're yeah, defaulting they to things. out of like an instinct or out of a sort of sense they have that this is what's appreciated and right. and. Yeah. Everybody does it. Well, yeah, it's I, 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 I too. Everyone does it too. I totally extent. think that, like, um, I have a sense of, like, if something feels, like, in a in, good in a, such a conventional way, that can make me like it a little bit more than how much I enjoyed yeah. it when watching it. Because it gives me so much more appreciation for it afterwards, I see. I mean, I mean it, so it, it, I totally it's satisfying get it. to champion, it's satisfying to agree with people and to, like, right. say, oh, I love this show, and to have everyone nod in agreement and go, yes, mm-hmm. yes, that is yeah. a good show. Yeah. And so if you've got two shows that you like equally, one of which is going to be controversial and get you, like, insulted, and the other of which is, like, everyone's going to be like, yep, <clears> same. Uh, you know, I think yeah, people are naturally inclined to, to pick that one. I yeah, like, agree, and look, I, we, I think it's... I, I definitely well. find some deep satisfaction with the few times I get to agree with pop culture. And that's, like... Mm-hmm, that's why mm-hmm. I, I actually... Like, when people call me a hipster and stuff, I always feel like it's... 
it's so mischaracterizing who I am because of the fact that I hate I don't I hate that my taste is hipster taste. Like I wish everyone liked everything yeah. I like. I don't want to be the guy who likes the things that nobody likes. See, and like, see, that's that's the thing. This whole plebe thing simply comes out of a lack of understanding what the fuck is going on. If you yeah. don't like something, <laughs> just explain why. Like and if you're right, people will agree with you. And that's what we all do in our fucking videos. I made a fucking 40-minute video. It took me six months of my life just to explain why one show is a little bit better than everyone already thinks it is. <laughs> that was yeah. substance. There was substance going on there. What this is, what we see from the fucking plebes, is them just saying, nope, you're wrong. And I'm not going to oh, yeah. explain why. I You're never just actually, wrong. Yeah, I was, I was well, on my fucker, way. I'm not impressed by that. I'm not impressed by that argument. Come back to me when you've got something intelligent to say. Right. I was on my way to my point about uh, <sighs> like that yeah. other kind of plebeness uh, that I was accusing anime every day of. Of just like mm -hmm. the fact that he thinks that he has made the point about those shows is like, uh, like plebe in regards to being a writer. Like that I think that – there's a standard that I think most people is the standard of reviews, and it's shit tier. Like, yeah. if you're writing reviews that could get published in a major magazine, those are the shittiest reviews possible. <laughs> if you're writing, unless, like, you're, unless you're that one guy who writes for EGM about how everything is a dick sucking cock. Uh, yeah, it's like Tom Cruise Sean, sucking my Sean dick. Sean baby, um, Sean yeah, baby. Yeah, that's the one. The thing is that I think there was a time in history where consumer reviews were really important, right? Where, like, yeah, because yeah. A, a new movie came out <clears throat> and no one knew if it was good unless they went and watched it. And so you would open up a magazine and the magazine would give you, like, a very short description of, like, whether... And th the, the thing people have to understand about, like, writing from this so-called objective perspective, like, the point of it was never to, like, determine the film's quality. It was to present it in a way that the most people would resonate with, right? Like, mm -hmm. most people will feel that a movie is shittily paced. So if someone says in an article, the film is bad because the pacing is bad, they're saying that because most people will feel that way. It doesn't mean the movie is actually bad because there's probably someone out there who doesn't care about the pacing and will love that movie. But, like, yeah. the general... Cons like, a critic is someone who has to channel what they believe to be the general consensus and put it into words, and that's what a consumer review is. And that's what someone like Roger Ebert was so good at doing, you know? But, like... I think that that age is gone. Consumer reviewers are completely fucking unnecessary because we have Rotten Tomatoes. And all you have to do is open it and look at the number and go, okay, you know, now I know. <laughs> like, it, I mean, yeah. which is an aggregate of, like, a bunch of those mainstream consumer reviews. But, like, if you're fucking on YouTube doing, like, consumer reviews of anime, it's like we have Anime News Network for that. We have, uh, like, regular publications. We have magazines. We have... You know, you can look at the score th that is given on my anime list or something. Like, what is the, mm -hmm. the yeah? Point make your of this? channel the story like, of me, your tastes. Because if you if you're a good writer right. and you're like authentic yeah. with yourself, you can make you more interesting. And I'm not I'm not accusing anyone of not being authentic. I'm just saying like maybe play into that a little bit more. Right. Like again, let's let's I, be I very clear. Weird. We're not like judging. Did you? Well, I don't think you were judging anyone based on your tastes. You were making statements right. like a uh, reverse spectrum that he just the recently... worst thing that you could accuse digi of was saying that someone's taste yeah, well, was boring i guess so but like like a reverse spectrum statement. a guy who i think listens to these he added me on mal recently and i looked at his top five well his top mm. four are redline madoka samurai flamenco and ping pong and i was like whoa i see a connection he likes stuff that goes all out insanity or something like that that's kind of a cool right. taste for him yeah. and you know everyone's taste is fair yeah. it's just that not me this isn't me because I don't spend all my time on 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 4chan, but Digi has certain opinions that make him go, oh, I know this kind of thing, derp de doo. Hi, I'm interrupting the podcast. Um, man, I had just gotten out of bed when I got on to this podcast. I guess I'm really slurry when I first wake up and a lot less articulate. Also, this was recorded probably three weeks before it was the point at which it gets released. Uh, because Nate said, Because you came into it late, that for some reason means you have to be the one to edit it. And I was like, well, okay, uh, when I'm done with everything else I have to do, hmm, <laughs> hmm, hmm. 
and so this is what happens. Well, I just, yeah. I, I'm bored by this idea of like making a video or making a list that says like, here's what are the best <clears throat> anime, and I'm like, I don't think we need someone to tell us that. Like, it's, it's yeah. obvious in a way. Like, I need you to explain to me why people care about it. Like, because and those those shows are fucking ancient, you know, like. More people need to watch more and broader anime and come to their own conclusions about right. what the best anime is. And, and that's, that's right. the other that's thing, right. is that, like, I think that when we, like, because, like, I understand from his perspective, he's thinking, like, well, here's all these masterpieces, and not enough people have seen them, so I need to promote them. But I'm over here, like, I know all these other shows I consider masterpieces that even mm -hmm. less people are watching. And so, like... It would be so much more interesting yeah. to me if someone came out and they were like, my top nine shows are like Manabi Straight and fucking, uh, I'm just going to look around my room at the... I don't Dokoida even know what that is. It's just and, a funny way you said it. And fucking and, Simone. And Camphor. And, Camphor. Yeah, and Camphor. <laughs> like, if someone yeah. came out with a list that had Camphor on it, like... Yeah. Because the thing is, what if you were on... that guy's deal? If you were on 4chan, then someone's going to go, what the Camphor? Fuck is Camphor? Uh. But if that guy, if I saw it, if I saw it in top nine and, like, there was, like, eight great shows and camphor i immediately <laughs> yeah. am gonna text like i'd be like please write a review of camphor please like <laughs> yeah, nothing yeah. could be more interesting to me than that guy's review of camphor you know and so like if i see a list and it's like nine shows that i've read a thousand million popular reviews of you know like like at mm -hmm. the end of uh at the end of 2009 this guy Compi like uh, basically every anime blogger on the planet like made a top fifty anime of the decade list just because mm -hmm. it was the end of the decade everyone wanted yeah. to do it so this guy called Aqua Blue uh, Aqua Blue Sweater who's like a statistician um, mm -hmm. took all of them and <clears throat> compiled them into like the list of what were uh, the yeah. top rated ones cool, and it was like cool. Haibane Renmei Mushishi Kaiba like all these you know mm -hmm. all the frou frou shows you expect to be up there mm -hmm. and it's like yeah. they'd all been reviewed by everyone because like everyone who made those top 50s they had a like you know their little blurb about each show so that means like there were more blurbs written about fucking mushishi than any other show so when someone makes a video that's like mushishi is the best show i'm like yeah i know everyone knows we all know write about <laughs> something else please <laughs> here's something that confuses me a little bit i think a lot of people what they want out of a review is that it agrees with their opinion. Sure. And, yeah. and which which makes it kind of... Doesn't that make it inherently uninteresting? I don't under... That's I, what I was I saying to my uh, some some commenters I didn't like. I was like, guys, listen, a video is for like it's like an editorial, it's a think piece. It's not a it's not an opinion agreement I, delivery yeah, I'm service. Of two, I'm of two if you minds phrase it like that, then you I shut them up. That it feels good to hear someone affirm your opinion, but I also think that it's not interesting to well, just hear once. your own opinion ben, I, back at you. I totally agree, but that's why I am firmly of the stance that I think happiness and good feelings are vastly overrated. You know, I actually, no, I agree with that. No, yeah, ben, you I mean, know. Think about think about from this real quick, uh, kind viewers. If everyone was happy all the time, what would get done? Nothing. I Nothing actually, would get done. I think actually, at this point, <laughs> I, I've way gotten past the point where I actually get really mad when I read positive reviews of stuff I like that don't explain anything. Like, oh yeah, like mm. the worst review to me is when someone like like <clears throat> if I see a review of Kaon. And like, mm -hmm. and the review is like, "Oh, this show's really cute and fun, and it's it's and it's good. Go go watch it." And yeah. I'm like, yeah. "What the fuck? How is that gonna like? Yeah, no shit. I already knew that, you know." You know, dude, that's 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 very much the reason. Like when I was making my Gurren Lagann video, like I watched everyone's review, right. and they were so shit. They were so bad. It had to be corrected. Yeah. So yeah, I'm of, of the exact same opinion. And that's actually like. That was realizing that, like what you realized watching all those, was a huge part of what affirmed me into like doing this because of the fact yeah. that I had always assumed that this would already have been done by a million people. That like mm -hmm. there was mm -hmm. already gonna like like with Ava, you know, like you assume there must have been every Ava analysis possible because it's been around for so long, and you know, yeah. and I know there is a lot. Like there actually is like a whole channel of Ava analysis. Um, and mm -hmm. there's, like, the Ava Geeks forum and all that stuff. But, like, in spite of all that, I feel like most of the stuff I've said about the show is stuff I've never seen someone else say. And, like, I I think there's still so much room because I think up until recently, consumer reviews were what people thought criticism of art was. And, like, analysis yeah. was mostly, like, a... a uh, 
like a school a, what's the word i'm looking for um for i don't know like a school project sort of thing is that uh, what you're saying uh, no uh, academic that's the word i'm looking oh, for oh yeah okay like okay. it's more of an academic thing it's more of a university thing yeah to, like, and like do i don't think the market's stuff. ever going to be too crowded f- of like personal like uh thoughtful pieces right. related to your own life of any show you know whereas it's like like i think if if you can like if you wanted to write just a review of a show like go to google and type like Konosuba review and you're gonna if you get any result don't write a review <laughs> like write an analysis write a think piece write yeah, something original yeah, that's fair you know? like i don't need there to be more than one review of anything and th- this has gotten to this point with all these fucking new movies coming out where because every youtuber mm-hmm. has decided that they're going to review every new fucking marvel movie it makes and that we money get, dude right we get yms putting out these quickies that are worthless like completely critically yeah. worthless they tell you nothing about the film they are usually like him nitpicking <clears throat> two random elements and then spending five minutes going well it was good but it wasn't as good as it could have been but it's pretty okay it wasn't quite as good as great but it wasn't quite as great as amazing yeah. but it wasn't as good and as then, not good but it was almost like three levels of good over good five and- <laughs> like like i watched all these fucking reviews of civil war and it was like movie bob had probably the best consumer review possible for that movie. And even Mm. then, all I could think the whole time was, who cares? Like, everyone's going to see the movie. Anyone who gives the slightest fuck about this movie is going to watch this movie. This will probably be one of the highest grossing films of all time. Why do we have 800 consumer reviews coming out for a movie literally everyone will see? Because Why yeah, consumer reviews, those were invented dude. before the information age, guys. We don't need those as much anymore. Yeah, you know, I, I was going to say this before, but, like, I was thinking before about, like, how I got into the video games I like. And, like, there were two ways. Like, my friends would tell me about them, and, and like, Ben, and, like, people I knew. And then I read Game Informer. Or, yeah. like, I would, like, oh look at magazines, God. right? I love Game Informer. Game Informer was I used the to shit. love that shit. It was shit. so useful, but, like, uh, But even changed, more than that, you know? I would just flip through it looking for reviews with scores under five and just read them, like, <laughs> trash a game just because I wanted to hear what, <laughs> yeah. like, yeah. shitty things they would but, say about but, them. But, see, yeah, it was super great. It was super fun. I love that magazine. But, like, I don't read it anymore largely because i mean maybe maybe because i don't have time but like it doesn't serve the same purpose it once did of right. like educating people on what a game you can just fucking google it you and can find just a go thousand on v pages about whatever and, go on v and yeah. everyone's talking about it you know aggregated hey. all of human information go to Wiki- so, yeah. wikipedia so bringing up movie bob reminds me of another another layer on the mm-hmm. pleb seven layer dip <laughs> yes and th- and Flatter that is the that- sour cream some another like root Ugh. cause of plebness of of chronic plebness. Do you not like sour a, cream, Digi? I I actually like physically can't eat sour cream. Oh like, fuck you, sour cream rules. Uh, okay, man, sorry, man. Go on, it's, go on. Like, uh, it's like a like a re- like I throw up if I eat it. Like it's disgusting. <laughs> well, get over it, bitch. I'm gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> sneak sour cream into your into your. Into I'm, your I'm gonna get a puke on your nuts if you do that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, yeah, movie Bob. Uh, I think people are invested in liking things just by yeah. nature of the yes. fact that they watch them. In in not not Civil War, in Avengers, in his really that good about Avengers movie, Bob brings up that like going in to watch Avengers, you know, people aren't just rooting for the Avengers. Like rooting for the Avengers themselves to win is the same as them rooting for them to like the movie, for the movie itself to succeed. Yeah, that and, was weird. That was his point. I, Though I, I think, think Bob really is someone who can just watch movies, whatever. Like he's he is no pleb when. It comes to movies in terms of watching them it seems no, like he's watched he's all movies that exist like, like like his like i thought his point was good about people like that go into the movie are already invested like financially and time-wise yeah. in their own enjoyment of right. the movie they want to like it because they are there watching yeah. it and i thought it was weird that he made it out like avengers was the only movie that did this or that it was brilliant for doing it i thought it was applicable to pretty much any movie yeah, that yeah, would, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. just yeah. the fact that i have watched something kind of makes me want to give the benefit of the doubt so that I won't have wasted that's, my time. That's entirely true, but that brings up perhaps the biggest core problem with plebdom in general, which is just an, an, an interest in liking it over being critical of it and like viewing it from an intellectual yeah. lens, you know? Particularly it, it something that, that you I've used to like over. that you don't really like as much anymore, but you want to yeah, keep uh, uh, hanging uh, on to it. Shut the fuck up. Keep going on these long tangents I don't give a fuck about. Um, <laughs> It, uh, wow. Yeah, I uh, no, it's it's true, Ben. You're, you're absolutely right about that. It's. Um, I, I mean, 
Yeah, I mean, that was a thing that I used to... F- I think I used to feel that more strongly. Nowadays, I, I, I find I find disliking something to be just as interesting and satisfying yeah. as liking something, after the fact. Well, ben, I'm no longer bothered by yes. the idea that I didn't like something. You've got to get to that place. Ben, From plebdom, you've got to rise. I think that's where... I think that the same exact emotion you're talking about is why people do these things like I did with Sword Art Online or Asterisk War, where, like, I think that... When you watch something and you don't like it at all, you feel that you need to squeeze something out of it. Like, you have to get... Like, because you've been so yeah. wrong. Like, my brother Victor, he's... um, but Like, long before I was even doing YouTube, uh, like, a couple years before, and I kept wanting to do videos out of this, but he would... Every time he saw a movie he hated, he would go on these epic rants about them. Like, he saw, like... Uh, that sounds like me in my youth. He saw fucking, what's it called? Uh, Clash of the Titans, like the new one. And mm. he just like went on this fucking tirade, this like 22-minute amazing, beautiful <laughs> tirade. And it was the best thing I'd ever seen. And I, I realized that it's just because he felt so robbed by the movie that he had to like, you know, feel something. So like mm-hmm. he had to express his rage so that he could then feel a response to the to the film you know? <laughs> I have to feel anything at all right. even yeah. if it's, it's just it's rage. better to feel something than nothing yeah. uh and by the yeah. way Devu, i want to extend the olive branch i didn't mean to be so harsh there i was just finishing a point yeah, anything you'd care you to guy. comment on now Devu? i said every, uh, that was the whole sentence you like stopped me at the end of my point <laughs> well then well done <laughs> nate all right <laughs> yeah i'll go into another uh facet of plebdom that um okay this is a, sort of changing the subject but i feel like we've gone like for a while, we were doing reviewer rules too. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, getting yeah. back into plebs. But really, though. every video is a reviewer. <laughs> it, it kind of is. We, we tend to go back. Into That's our that. perspective. Yeah, yeah. But here's one that that drives me crazy: is just the closed mindedness of plebs. Mm-hmm. And I think that, um, I think that a big part of being a pleb is not realizing how much more is out there and how many different ways there are to enjoy things. And yes. just, like, yes. holding up in your idea of yourself and what you like. And it's most common with... I, I think basically everyone gets into most things through action, right? Like, like mm-hmm. we all probably grew up watching more action-oriented shows than we than the ones we watch now. Yeah, would you say? Yeah, I remember, like, in, like, Power Rangers and stuff like that when yeah, I was like, young. Yeah, and then yeah. getting I think you would have watched, DBZ. Like, like, Next Gen when you were eight, you know? Like uh, oh no, well I mean not no no I mean I really liked Winnie the Pooh well beyond too. the age that, well beyond yeah, the man. age that I was supposed to like Winnie the Pooh <laughs> yeah I like which that is shit, now like, right That's the case I mean I me. haven't watched it in a long time but I was really I big into Winnie the Pooh it. but that show is also very bright and colorful and fun it's to watch great. so comfy but like it's the, the best the point I'm making is sort of that I think when you're young. You like action because it's immediate and it's not boring and you get the point right off the bat. Like, everything is clear to you. And, like, that's why shows for kids are all action or comedy. Like, it it always is. Mm -hmm. And there was even a, like, a quote from a, like, I first realized that when I was, like, 12. And um, they were showing, like, some behind-the-scenes footage for Aqua Teen Hunger Force, like, the making of. And the guy was saying, like, you know, because this is an adult cartoon, we don't have to animate shit. Because, like, with kids... Oh, great. He <laughs> was like, off, with kids, stuff, have, stuff has to be moving constantly or else they won't pay attention. But with adults... Adults will watch anything. Well, yeah, well, I mean, it's kind of true. that's such like, a weird reversal of, like, the normal the normal attitude. That, like, it is. It's interesting. Things for kids can be shit. Right. Wow, but the, that's the funny weird. thing about it is that it's just animation. Because what carries Aqua Teen Hunger Force is entirely the voice acting and dialogue. Like, yeah, it's got... Much. It's really well acted. It's this weird, offbeat humor... But, like, most of the show is completely not animated. Like, it's just lip mm-hmm. movements and, like, like nothing actually moves. And so, like, yeah, but he was like, yeah, because kids... And the funny thing is that, of course, plenty of kids did watch that show because it's still yeah. a cartoon and it's still, uh, you know... Captures the imagination Colorful, of kids who've never whatever. seen anything like this before. It, but like, and you know, dude. Yeah, no, go on. I just think that for, I think that for a lot of people, they never quite graduate out of the mindset of liking the same thing that they liked when they were young. Because like, you you yeah. you eventually have this identity of I'm a guy who likes action shows, and then until something disproves that, 
it just keeps getting stronger over time that you yeah. just never believe that you'll like something else unless you, it's yeah. proven wrong. You know? And, you know, As dude, a- that totally reminds me. That that just makes me think of an example in my life that you guys can probably all relate to. Like, because I, I want to make a distinction between, and probably should have done this at the beginning, between, like, plebdom and intelligence because they are not necessarily correlated at all. Case Despite in point, what Urban Dictionary would yeah. have us believe. Case yeah. in point is my own dad because my dad is a super smart guy smartest guy i know probably and um like he likes to watch on tv like the trashiest shit yeah that you could possibly he loved he loves big bang theory yeah we're in it oh, i hope you're recording sake. jesse i'm making a fucking point get back to me when you're recording uh uh, uh yeah, we're already 15 minutes oh, yeah. into this jesse <laughs> well he ben jumped in like for the last five minutes of one once so that was fine um what well, uh, oh, okay i was just saying that my dad likes super trashy shows that really he just watches like to turn off his brain like to relax right. he's not he's not us he's not a guy who's like God looking damn. to like make the best art possible <laughs> he's a guy who wakes up works for like 12 hours a day doing like this this you know the, doing the, like his job and then at the end of the day he's ready to fucking chill he just wants yeah. to like relax and that is super pleb but like it's not a reflection on the kind of man he is it's just that when it comes to this art no. stuff he doesn't give yeah, a fuck it, you know it's a reflection on, on it's it's an, it's on, what he's his... looking for out of yeah. it and yeah. you can be looking maybe this for... is why people think yeah. that digi bro I've, to use him as another example so really i'm defending he plebs here. A... I'm, I'm your i'm your people's champion so you know don't yeah. come crying to me but like i, I I think maybe a lot of people, you know, if they get some opinion in their heads, Mm -hmm. they go into every show or everything that they do thinking, whatever it is, I'm going to make sure it reinforces my existing opinions as much as possible. And that may be why a lot of people, to use Digi as another example, think that he hates A1 shows because they're A1 shows and will go out of his way. No, you go into, I mean, what you've told me is you go into A1 shows hoping for it to be the one that proves you wrong, right? That makes you finally like it. I'm sure the people who say that don't believe Digi when he says that, but we know him and we know that that's true. I mean, mean, a lot, not not everyone not everyone wants to be critical of their media not mm-hmm. everyone not everyone really values uh, yeah, art yeah. in a ver- in in a way that I, that we do not it's really yeah, like, it's, yeah, not everyone really cares it's way more interesting if you go, that's true it's way more interesting to go into a thing thinking how is this going to change into and evolve my taste. Right. Is this going to be the country album that gets me into country that's exactly, you know, I, instead of going I don't like country I listen to that's the thought mm. I have um, yeah not been paying attention for a very oh my long God, time. I, I, yeah, I honestly and forgot I, you were here. <laughs> and I, and, the, and I realized that it's just because I, I, I don't care about in. people being plebs. They can do whatever they like. <laughs> well, you don't care um, about anything, Nate. Nate, Nate, Nate let, me, you, let me go back to they can. Let me, be, let me go back to what like Guy was saying things. real yeah. quick. Uh, yes, let's about, talk about my brilliant points. Go about on. people. Um, yeah, like they get an idea of what they like when they're young, and then it never changes. That was me I think that, that part of me. that. Com- <laughs> no, it was me. It's all me. <laughs> oh, whatever. Uh, I, th- I think that that's. I mean, people just don't. I mean, when you're a kid, you have all the time in the world to consume all the all the shows and whatever and games mm-hmm, and stuff right. in the world. Uh, so, and then like, yeah, you grow up. You tend to not have either the time, nor patience, nor even the desire to like mm-hmm. watch more stuff. So right. you don't, yeah. So that just that just kind of, you yeah. Don't, my you my point to is just don't act like you have legitimate opinions. Yeah. yeah, I wanted to get into Nate because you were talking about your mm. dad being a pleb, and like, yeah. my dad's mm. plebness fascinates me so much because, yeah. like, yeah. Uh, you know, like your dad, he's a smart guy, not as educated as yours, but he does read a lot. Loves mm-hmm. philosophy and stuff like that, so it's pretty knowledgeable. Cool, cool. watches yeah. fuckloads of TV. Like all he does when he's not at work is watch TV. He comes home, he mm-hmm. turns it on, he leaves it on. I mean, he doesn't necessarily pay attention to all of it. He'll like check his fucking tablet and stuff, but yeah. he will get instantly invested in anything. It doesn't matter if something's on TV and he watches it for more than one minute. He is immediately invested, and you cannot distract him, or else he'll get mad. That's not pleb. That's patrician as fuck. Yeah, it, it, it does not matter <laughs> what it is. That's a superpower. And no, it, it, it's it's interesting because on some level it is super patrician because like he actually that's like it. that's like me when that's like me when Law and Order Special Victims Unit comes on, and even though I don't <laughs> give a fuck, I can't not uh, watch it. Yeah, Special Victims time. Unit is great at baiting the hook. It's at the funny beginning because of the I'm, I'm the type who like I. I'll walk in and like I can even like get interested and I'll leave anyways because I'm like I want to do something else. But like yeah. my dad will he'll just watch everything and like 
any TV show that's, like, actually good or any movie that's actually good, he retains all of it. He can remember stuff about movies from, like, decades ago, even though his memory is ordinarily complete shit. But the funny yeah. thing is that, because he's explained it to me before, that, like, TV is just because he grew up with it and he, like, understands it then it's very easy for him to, like, just watch all of it. Like, it, he was like, you know, when I was growing up, you just watched all the TV. That's just what people did. You sat down with your family at the end. Like, he said, you know, my parents would come home, and we'd all sit mm-hmm. in the living room, and we'd all watch TV together, and that was just what life was, you know? So, like, yeah. that's so ingrained in him. And he's always said that, like, he's a, he's legitimately, like, afraid to play video games because if he thinks that it would take so much more investment that he would become super addicted and it would consume his whole life. Like, that's why he doesn't want to play games. Yeah, okay. But, yeah, like, okay. but yeah. when it comes to music, for whatever reason, he can't, as he put it, he doesn't hear music. Like, it just kind of huh. starts playing and he immediately stops paying attention to it. And, like, the only songs he listens to are, like, stuff with catchy hooks and, like, anything that's good for working out. He, he downloads these fucking these like running mixes of songs where it'll be like it's basically like Eurobeat <laughs> yeah. but like with a dance like a like oh, a dance oh, version familiar. of a song. I'm familiar with them. They're fucking mm-hmm. hilarious. But he'll have like all this like trashy music. Running on to his initial phone. D music is just the most awesome thing you can do with your life. Yeah. But, okay. Well, not it's not like that intense. But, like, <laughs> but he he listens to like all this like you know incredibly pleb tier shit. He once was yeah. My favorite quote from him ever was uh, that Billy. Uh, what's his name? Billy Joe song, Armstrong. You were a mistake. Yeah, he said uh-huh. Billy Joe Armstrong is the greatest songwriter of all time. The guy from Green Day, and I was just like, <laughs> it blew my mind so hard awesome. that he legitimately thought that. And then like, and he he is like, I could just oh, I could endless treasure trove. Well, of I mean, about. who who's to say that he isn't though? I mean, he could well, be, but his reasoning was that he had I sold mean, the most records. Obviously, I'm actually the greatest songwriter actually, of all time. But taking myself out of the equation, mm-hmm. I can see how the way I would, would describe sure. what my dad's logic was for why Billy Joe Armstrong is because he's the most successful musician who my dad is also a fan of. Like, yeah, like yeah. not that That's not good, that he's the because I like that because my dad really values like success like he thinks that if you are the best seller then that means you are the best but at the same time if he doesn't like it then he's not going to acknowledge it as the best so it's like he should right he should that be uh, he should say uh is... he should say gangam style is the greatest musician of our generation then well that is a fucking good <laughs> right? song i yeah. would say but um <laughs> i mean he is but yeah. okay yeah. His name is Psy, by the way. His name no, is I'd not Gangnam Style. No, his name, <laughs> that's, that's his his name, name is definitely Gangnam Style. He's a really cool guy. Yeah. It's a, he makes K-pop and doesn't write yeah. of anything. I mean, let's be honest. What mm. other songs is he ever going to write? He's Gangnam uh, he Style did, until the day he, he dies. Gentleman was good. Yeah. Oh, I liked Hangover. I don't believe you. I enjoyed Hangover. Stop it. Yeah. Stop, stop making up these fake songs. He's not a real... <laughs> he's not even... a gentleman. That song was literally you know, just I don't, Gangnam I don't even, Style. I don't even believe that Psy is a real person. I think he's like computer animated like gorillas or something. <laughs> He's secretly created by Kesha so that she could make music while still being locked into contract yeah. with that rapist. She created the song. <laughs> right, yeah. You know what? I want to talk about a, a, a small defense of plebs. And I want to make this a distinction mm-hmm. because there's, I think there's a very big difference that is extremely overlooked between having like pleb taste as in you only like bullshit and you have no good reasons for it. And then I think mm. there's I think there's a, a an an underrated populace of people who don't know a lot of different shows but actually do really appreciate the few things that they're into on a really sure. deep level. Sure. And I think a great example is Jesse's musical taste. Because if Jesse once I, I was what are you what what is this what is this attack on my character as soon as I join the podcast no it's not I'm defending you first of all but insane you sent clown me insane clown posse is a, is a visionary not just uh, insane Arthur, clown posse you know? but like I had I had a bunch of my friends make top 100 album charts once and Jesse mm-hmm. sent me one that had like entire discographies of five different artists it was like all the gorillas albums it. that doesn't mean I don't know of other music no I'm not saying you don't but I'm saying that like. It just seems like you you really appreciate those few bands rather than like being into like a fuck ton of different things. Yeah, because they're you know? objectively the best bands. Yeah, like Jesse would say that like uh the, the, the song he was listening to when he when he plowed puss for the first time, you know, that's a ten out of ten song just by virtue of that alone, right? You're you're oh, big yeah. personal connection stuff. Right. I just remember thinking, like, I saw the list and I was like, if anybody else sent me a list and their top ten was what your top ten was 
I would probably assume they were a pleb. I think that song actually might have been the Rambo theme, now that I'm thinking <laughs> back to it. But because... Because I was watching... First Blood, uh, I was baby, watching, First Blood. Yeah, I was watching First Blood Part 2 on Valentine's Day, but and I think that's what it happened. I know for a fact that there's nothing that Jesse loves that he couldn't explain to me in great detail why it was there, you know? Like, yeah. if I said, like, like if someone else told me, like, even if it's something as simple as, like, I listened to it, like, when me and my best friends had this, like, amazing car ride and, like, got in tune with our spirits at, like, five in the morning just driving across the state border, running from the police, like, that's a much more interesting explanation than anything fucking anime every oh, yeah. day is gonna give Dude, you. Wait, about, hold on. Like, that's hey, a, that, actually, yeah. here's, here's, a, this is totally off topic, but I think it's okay. fascinating. I can actually mm. get that vicariously from other people's stories. Has that ever happened to you? That, like, that you read happened. what yeah, happened a, to somebody else? Like, cause that's a mark of a great storyteller who this, can convey that well, you sort know, of thing. That's kind of how I am with everything. And I think when you have a personal connection to something, that's the most patrician fucking thing there is. Yeah. You can like anything. You can like a fucking oh dog Oh my gosh, turd. I just what realized that a huge irony saved here. your life as a child, then that's a, that's a patrician what dog turd. The whole time you were talking about this, I was thinking about this one older cousin of mine who's pleb in the most annoying way mm. where she's like, uh, this is this. And her name is Patricia and well, so she's all well. like she, like she's like oh this movie sucks or like she just like says it and then like doesn't say anything about she's it and like, it just uh, makes you anime feel anime was a mistake uh. she just makes you feel icky about it I also know this this, this other anime girl who I knew Japanese who was cool. all like <laughs> That's what I just like the people say. who are like that and I think they're all women like the people who are like uh, this is I guess there's plenty I, I personally in my own life I've only known women who are I, I like too this all right hate women <laughs> yes. I right, think like we where can they're just like, agree. Yeah, 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 I like mean, that. is there oh, anything is more pleb than, than women? Like honestly. that kind of plebishness. That's the least co- favorite kind of I have to talk to that. Okay, that's the cool. kind of people who don't even go on forums. That's kind of what I was <laughs> yes. talking about. You with the... don't even go on forums. <laughs> Shame. Fucking Shame. Well, I mean, like people with who go on forums have some level of investment. Yeah, you know? that's, true. that's true. Well, I yeah, but uh, to get back to what I was saying <laughs> about yes, the personal yes. connections thing, like yeah, I agree with. Uh, with Jesse, I think there's a lot to be said about if if it still evokes those feelings, like because I've had stuff where I had mm-hmm. a personal connection to it, and then now I don't care anymore, and like it's just <clears throat> like, but sometimes this is my favorite example because there's a song by the band At the Drive-In called Invalid Litter Department, and it's one of my favorite songs ever. And every time I hear it, I think about how I read on, like, some random... It was on, like, songmeanings.com or something. Like, someone just wrote this thing about how they were driving with their friend through, like, some bombed-out city or something. Like, like just passing mm, by yeah. in the middle of the desert and, like, blasting the song. And they were, like, crying. And now, every time <laughs> I listen to the song, I imagine myself driving down a desert road with a bombed-out village crying. And... And now that's my, that's why I like the song now. It, it, no, that, that's totally normal. It's that's not a, even my experience, but it, yeah, I, I think. That's, yeah, hmm. humans are good at that. And you know, at, I at think empathy. that's what, I think that's what keeps, like, me knowing that that's happened to me is why I love my job. Because I can't see it from an outsider perspective, but I get emails from people who are always telling me how, like, you know, I've changed the way that they saw certain shows and stuff. And, like, mm-hmm. I, there's been times where... Like, my opinion of something was fundamentally changed by reading a review. Like, uh, like these two Agaloch albums called The Mantle and Ashes Against the Grain. And, like, at first I, I liked the first one and didn't like the second one. And then I read this review where this guy made this, like, really strong case for why the other one was the better one. And then once I listened to it again, I completely understood, and now it's my favorite one, you know? Yeah. Or, like, you bring up sometimes that, like, when we did our Kill a Kill podcast long ago, we were yeah. both warm to lukewarm, but then something changed, and you fell in love. Yeah. And I don't know what it is, but it didn't happen to me. This so. guy explained... Well, he was 8 out of 10 right out the gate. Yeah. Like, Hey, yeah, you know what? That's a good definition of pleb. Anyone who thinks Kill a Kill is not patrician is a pleb. <laughs> that is that is definitely true. I agree. Well, I, yeah, yeah, I agree, I suppose. But uh, I don't think, no, it's, I I just, don't think uh, it's not patrician. I just don't love it. I don't, right. I don't Whatever. I don't want to get into a whole thing. I came into this podcast late, so I don't know if we discussed this already, but mm. we discuss how uh, how completely stupid this topic is, and how <laughs> the word pleb itself is a word that only fucking idiots use, and elitist swine would ever even use the word pleb in well, the first again, place. Well, again, I just... Yeah, well, like, you when think, I think that of the until you have to pleb, talk to them. 
When I think like, of the word pleb, all I can picture is that anime snob with yeah, his we went over fucking that. ho-dunk, <laughs> rinky-dink yeah, little you know, channel. Like, but I want to make fun of the anime snob. Well, I know I how hate ironic him the most. this is. You know, I, I know these kinds of people. When I hear pleb, I think of my f- my cousin, even though her name is Patricia. I think of her and think, yeah, these are this is a real kind of people. And if you have to talk to them, it's a real problem. Jesse, if you want to talk about the snob, you have to do the voice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, I want to suck so many dicks. It's all I want to do. I want to suck Digi Bro's dick. I, that's why I poke him in the back like a little girl in third grade. I throw gum in his hair because I want to suck his dick. Guys, hold on. I actually legit, I logged into Skype earlier, and I had a message yeah. from him. And it said, oh. if I paid for the trip, would you come to the <gasps> con in Detroit? That's all oh. it said, and I was so confused. Ah. <laughs> uh, that little fucking well, fuckboy, he's so desperate for your attention. I have no it's idea pathetic. what Connie's talking about, or why. Wait. It was a really bizarre I message. I don't know, man, but I, uh, actually, you know what, speaking, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't take anything from him, but speaking whatever. Speaking of messages Why is he in flabness? Detroit? Hippo. Hippo, tell us about that dude. That musician. Ha 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 ha. Oh, oh who, shit. Who, who mess- oh, yeah, he, shit. didn't he just, he just sent Wait a minute, another wait. message after like a year? Oh, that's a great story, Gib. You gotta wait, tell did that. you say he was Sorry, in I'm, Detroit? I'm find the, the soul of Cinder. <laughs> you fucking You're asshole. I'm playing Dark Souls, goddamn. <laughs> it. Okay, I'm dead. Okay, right. Digi, where, wait, where did <laughs> you right, now I can talk dying. about it. Jesse, Digi. finish your point, yeah. Wait, I heard Detroit. Did you say Detroit in yes. there? A snob is I was apparently going to Detroit for an anime convention. Because was it's the he only in the part of America that's similar Because, because I was there I yesterday. My, I don't my think chance so. To say something. No, no, Gabe, we'll come back. Okay. Yeah, I, yeah, because, because, all right, because this was a this was a guy who wanted you to do some work for him, and because you didn't like his work, he accused you of being a pleb for not appreciating it. Yeah, let oh, let yeah. Gabe tell the shit. Go on. Oh, dude. okay. Well, um, last year when I was uh, I was just out of the the pony sort of stuff. I stopped making videos mm-hmm. and he approached me on DeviantArt and said, I saw you as a brony analyst and I thought you could do an animation for my music and he sent me his music and it was absolutely terrible <laughs> and like hilariously terrible even for like a pony can thing. we uh can we link that just to bully that person and have <laughs> yes. everybody thumb it down uh, a link in the description if, yeah go ahead I mean he we'll eventually got he eventually got an animator to do something for it so whatever but I told him that it was terrible and I didn't like it and I just uh-huh. you know because I was I was angry at the whole the whole <laughs> pony stuff I didn't want to be associated with it sure, so I told him yeah. to fuck off and he responded immediately with a really long rant about how I was a piece of shit and well, how just, that he, just to, just he, had, clarify... he had been a guitarist for 20 years yeah, and okay. he knew what he was talking about mm-hmm. and then he yeah. accused me of like lots of strange things that like you couldn't infer from what I said, but he—you could tell he just had problems with people who felt these certain ways about yeah, certain things. Yeah. Um, Didn't he say that? And like, then, like, then, like, three months later, animator? three months later, he responded to my same message again, as if he had forgotten without, without that he saw it before. Without provocation of you, right? He just did it himself. Yeah, he just yeah. did it again. He—I uh, guess he just went on DeviantArt, saw it again, and then got, <laughs> got angry mad again. All over again. Okay. And all then, right. yeah. and then a few days ago, it happened again. He, uh, he they're all completely like year, right? different. The very, trifecta. very long. Very long, yeah. um, angry comments against me, and it's so, it was really hilarious. Maybe he thinks you didn't read the first one, mm. and he's trying to get you to respond. Like, maybe he <laughs> yeah. really... Well, why would it be Ooh. like... It would be like the first one was a year ago. I think he... Uh, you know... I think all this time, he's been waiting for you to respond defeated <clears throat> and, like, apologetic. <laughs> and he hasn't gotten yeah. his apology yet, so he keeps reiterating the argument because he thinks you just haven't read it yet. I think that's what was going on here. I, 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 I do want the, him to, to post again, so I'm going to wait and see if he does that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think yeah. that the attribution of plebness in this scenario is really interesting if, if you pick it apart. Because, like, he, he's a pleb, yes. right? Yeah. He's someone who sucks. And he doesn't get he, that he sucks. But he's but he's mm-hmm. done it for a long time, which he thinks means he's better, but actually means he's worse because he's been a guitarist for so long, right. mm-hmm. and he's and he doesn't know what he doesn't know what's good. He has no ear for it because yeah. he, he yeah. made this song that he thinks is good and it's not bad. I I listened to it yeah. by the way back when he first posted it. Um, yeah, but because you think that it's bad, he because he 
has done it for a long time thinks he must be good. It must be you that's the pleb. Yeah. Right. Because yeah. you don't appreciate how good this thing must necessarily be due to how good he must necessarily be. Yeah. Not only Whoa! that, but in, yeah. and in some of his, like, in some of his like things, he accused me of being... <laughs> he assumed that I wasn't a musician because I didn't like his music. Like yeah, I, man. I, if I was Why a don't you guitarist, put down the Guitar Hero no, controller and let the real guitar you just I know. Me, you just brought me to what I think is now, in my opinion, the truest definition of pleb, and the, the fucking hilarious irony is that that anime snob is the perfect example. It's ha, the ha, abs- ha. I don't find that surprising I think, at all. Well, yeah. well, it's only surprising because that anime snob has seen way more anime than anybody else ever. Um, <clears throat> he's seen, yeah. he's yeah. seen an unbelievable amount. So you'd think he would have figured some shit out by now. But I think if yeah. I had to put a, a, a word to plebness, it would be the lack of intellectual curiosity. Just yeah. believing yes. that you have reached the end and that there's not further to go. And, I and think, that is yeah. as opposed to normies who just don't involve themselves yeah, with any of right. this shit. You know? I mean, yeah. if, you've se- if you've seen all the anime yeah. and you still can't appreciate the good stuff, that's way sadder right. than well, someone I think who's never seen If you've seen, seen every seen anime and you don't understand why someone might like right. Kaon, like, there's I think a problem with you. I think it's that that at some point in his life, that anime snob reached the conclusion that he understood mm-hmm. what is good and what is bad, and he's just applied that exact formula to absolutely everything, and he's it never revised his yeah. formula. And I think that it's, is exactly yeah. what, like, and that's kind of, like, I don't want to accuse anime every day of that, but that's, like, the impression I've gotten from him, and that's why that taste bothers me, because I think that's uh, yeah. how you end up I with think, that taste I think, is, is by being that yeah. way, you know? Mm-hmm. I think a mm-hmm. true pleb is just... Anyone who refuses to see what someone else might see in something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, I, sure. I totally see what you mean. You consume so much media, you don't get it. Reminds me of a great quote. <clears throat> I know people who read enormously, book for book, letter for letter, yet whom I would not describe as well-read. They possess uh, a mass of knowledge, but their brain is unable to organize and register the material they have taken in. That's it, man. Adolf Hitler. That's it. Who, sa- who said that? Adolf Hitler. Oh, that was a quote cool from Ryan Kong. <laughs> twist! <laughs> Secret twist! <laughs> Dude, this is an amazing wealth of Hitler quotes. Oh my god! <laughs> no, it's just that one. <laughs> is it just it's that just one? that one. Wait, is that I'm, why I've well, heard yeah. that quote before? Because out. you did that one to me I'm before? I'm freaking out! <laughs> we were, we're all sitting I'm here so nodding sorry. in agreement like, man, whoever said this really knew a thing or two. <laughs> oh my god! I'm blown away! That was we did the it. Best we, thing we've reached ever critical meme, guys. <laughs> I'm <Damn. laughs> Hitler out of nowhere. He's pulled that I one get, on me I before. Guess, I guess we're Nazis now. This is the Nazi <laughs> cast now. The funny yeah. thing hey, is, look, I actually let's be honest, for a people, second let, thought let, it might be Maddox because the way you read it was so <laughs> <much> <laughs> different. Yeah. Oh, yeah, man. Yeah, it does sound like Well, something okay, let's be say. real. I mean, are we just going to disavow anything Hitler says just no, because no, he's he was Hitler? A wise man. I he mean, was a wise man. he was well, he yeah. was a vegan. If Hitler, is, if Hitler says that the sky is blue, are we all going to say it's green now? No, no, it's you're, Wait, you're isn't right. Isn't this also just, a quote? I think it's I've heard no, it's, a quote that's by the someone quote from else me. Say, yeah, like if Hitler does X, is it bad? Like no, no, no. That exact that. phrase: yeah. if Hitler says the sky is blue, are we all gonna? Maybe Jesse said it in a different podcast or something. But I've, <laughs> I've heard that exact <laughs> Maybe. phrase. Uh, we all, yeah. Hitler wasn't yeah, wrong about everything. All right, we could all admit that. I mean, yeah, he wasn't wrong okay, about well, the Hit- Jews. Hitler might have Hitler might have made a, done a lot of bad things, but he definitely wasn't a plan. No, he was not. You a know, yeah. he was not. He might have he might have made one small guffaw once in his career. Yeah. He might have been a pleb about painting, though. Maybe that's why he didn't make it. That <laughs> yeah, way. that was oh my definitely God, that's the case. Exactly what it is. He was so pleb that it it, it it created a deep frustration with him in the <laughs> about the world. Plebness caused nine eleven. That's what right, he did, right? <laughs> can I? Oh, yeah, no. Can I tell you guys Hitler about fucking, uh... like? You know, I have a. Do you guys have this as well? Where you feel like if you don't know enough about a subject, do you mm-hmm. feel like inclined to not talk about it? Absolutely. Absolutely. Like, I, I'm definitely going to be careful with Absolutely not. Let me tell you people about Homestuck. Let me tell you about yeah. the worst yeah, thing right. ever created in the no. history of... Uh, Jesse, 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 I would love to see you make a Homestuck review with exactly as much knowledge <laughs> as right now. That was exactly right funny. now. Um, you know what, guys? Uh, it's funny, because we were arguing about Homestuck the other day for like six hours. It was horrible. You guys are bad people. Yeah. But, um, I don't want to get back into I went it. to oh Motor City Comic Con yeah. uh, yesterday. 
As soon as I walk in the oh building, boy. what's the first thing I see? Two fat troll cosplayers. <laughs> Still? And I just instantly thought of you guys and how much I hate ya and how much I hate Homestuck. <laughs> I, it no. was you, it was Digi and Ben, dressed up as homestuckers, walking <laughs> yeah, around at yeah. my convention. I want to know which what color were they? See, the sad thing, Jesse, <clears throat> is that if... It was the only one they ever dress up as, the gray guy with the horns. That's all oh, you ever yeah, fucking see. The one <laughs> gray guy with the horns. There's oh. a lot of horns. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so fucking mad. Anyways, I was yeah. going to say... I'm what's his name? Now. Like a big. What, what's his name? There's Vagina or Vaginal or something. <laughs> there's 12. 12. There's like 12. 12. Actually, there's like 20, 20, 20. Actually, yeah, there's 24. 24 of them now. Actually, technically, there's 26 with the whatever. With 24 the identical character designs. Yeah. Wow, what a great That's property. What a great work of All right, art. Anyway, I'm, ho I'm so hopping mad, dude. I'm hopping mad. <laughs> so the point I was what trying to make this? before Jesse completely yeah. derailed it with Homestuck is that like the biggest reason I do so many anime videos is that I just don't feel comfortable that I'm like like, I have an authoritative voice on anything else. Like, I yeah. know I know enough about anime to talk about it. And not that I know more <sighs> than everybody, but, like, that I, I feel that the shit I say is not bullshit, and it comes from a place of knowing what I'm talking about and, like, being able to comment on it. And then, like, when it comes to stuff like films and comics and stuff like that that I don't... Like, even though I do know a lot about them, there's just this feeling of... I haven't seen enough, you know, like, I haven't seen enough of the classics, yeah, yeah. I don't know enough of the, like, the real shit, and I've seen these, It's like, like if you're gonna go into writing an I'm... analysis post about it, you're gonna have to constantly double track to make sure you don't right. get something wrong, well, not, something not so like much that, about yeah, factual I totally... inaccuracies, but, like, I've noticed this, and this is something that bothers me about plebs, and it's not even that they're doing a bad job. Oh, it's the job. lack of perspective. Yeah, it's the lack of perspective, yeah. where someone will, sometimes I'll see, this happens a lot with, like, newbie anime reviewers. The perfect example would be Madoka Magica, where, like, mm -hmm. like my review that I wrote of it was largely in response to the, the, the plebness <clears throat> of so many reviews of Madoka, because that show had, a, like, a really broad appeal. Like, a ton of people watched it. Like, it was a lot of people, one of their first anime. Like, uh, you know, it was, it was, like, the biggest show of 2011. And yeah, yeah. there were so many people who wrote about it as this deconstruction of magical girl shows. Or That's as, the this, buzzword, yeah. as yeah. this, like, this, they kept saying, like, oh, it's, like, this dark take on magical girls. And I'm like, the fact is, it's funny cause, like, none the, of you have yeah. seen any magical girl shows. And I know yeah. that. Like, I know that <laughs> because, like, the next most popular one, Cardcaptor Sakura, is also dark. Like, it also has death and themes of, like, uh, uh, like a, uh, you know, just, like, darker themes, like, more adult stuff that you wouldn't expect it, a It's sort of because, like, Madoka, like, the way Madoka is written, it's sort of as though, like, hey, magical girls, let's be a magical girl, it'd be really easy, it'll be really fun. Oh, turns out there's a lot of death, so it makes people go, oh, so it must be representing the entire genre right. that it comes but it's, from, yeah, right? Yeah, that's the thing, like, and it was funny, because there was one time I tried <clears> to, I, I wrote a post called, like, How Madoka Magica Could Be a Deconstruction of Magical Girls. And the only conclusion I could come to was the fact that she never transforms until the very end of the show. Like, you know, yeah. it's not until the very end that she makes her one big transformation, and that's the only major one. But then I thought about it, and technically in Cardcaptor Sakura, she never transforms. She just puts on costumes that Tomoyo gives her. So that was already, <laughs> yeah. like, deconstructing the trope of the magical girl transformation, because Clamp, the artists, they didn't want to just have her transform into one outfit. They wanted her to wear different cute outfits every time. So there was no transformation. She just literally put on clothes that her friends was making for her. So it seems like this happens with a lot of different genres with anime. Like, I saw a clip of, like, an old Gundam thing, and it was like, you have to get in the robot, man. And he's like, I don't want to. I'm that scared. That was literally Wait, the when plot was this of aired? the original Gundam. Like, and it was like, yeah. wait a second, this is from the 80s? Like, 15 years before Evangelion, and right. you're already scared? What's going on here? Yeah, I don't know, man. I'm just scared. It's, it's, Everyone would yeah. be scared to get in a robot, not just Shinji Ikari. Come on, man. So you pleb. It's, it's, not, it's not wrong to say that, like, Eva, you know, did new things with it, because obviously that's true, right. but it is wrong to say it's never been done before, which is just showing that you don't know fucking jack shit about right. what you're talking about. I mean, there's about. really I'm nothing always... that Ava did that had never been done before. <clears throat> it, it was a conglomeration yeah. of a bunch of good ideas into one super good idea, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. When it, when it and, comes to and, reviews, and, and, and... I'm always, um, like, really mm -hmm. scared of being caught out as not knowing my shit. Yeah, well, you just I mean, gotta he's got, he's got, it's, it's one of those gotta, like... It's not so much that people will turn and laugh at me, like, you fucked up, it's like, 
from that point on, people will take me less seriously because I was incorrect. Yeah, you gotta foster well, trust. Well, like, with, if I want to do, like, a video about movies, I specifically write it in a way to where I'm not, like, putting on airs of knowing what I'm talking about that much. In regards to mm. video games, I know enough to where if someone who knows more than me is gonna correct me, I don't feel embarrassed because those people are, like, legit next level, like, hardcore gaming yeah, right. 101 fanatics. Right. Mm. I, I will say, though, that, like, to give two examples of two similar YouTubers who, one of whom comes off as a pleb sometimes in a way that bothers me and the other magically doesn't um pbs idea channel that guy yeah. i know he has an incredible breadth of knowledge i know he always <sighs> tries to get into every new nerd thing and like if it comes to music he knows everything he knows everything there is to know about music he's into the most obscure shit he's into the craziest stuff i know he knows film pretty well but he does this thing because on idea channel he always tries to like jump into every like big name topic and yep. sometimes you can just tell he doesn't know shit about that medium because, like, it, it'll be something like Madoka where something comes along that everyone makes a big deal out of and he talks about it <clears> in the way that everyone else is without having the context that it's actually not that impressive or different. Man, in it the pisses me off of that medium. he, like, thinks it's valuable to, like, restate what everyone's already stated while adding nothing to the conversation. Right. Those are the videos he makes piss but me then, off. So let me guess, you're going to compare him to NerdWriter, yeah, right? Yeah, I'm going to compare him to NerdWriter yeah. because with NerdWriter, he has, yeah. like... This amazing ability that I cannot, like, I don't know how much, like, for instance, with comics, he made this video about the Sandman comics, and, like, it was so mind-blowing to me that after this guy had made all these film analysis, all these song analysis, all this other shit, and then he brings comics into the fold, and not just, like, a, like, one everyone knows, it was fucking Sandman, and I was like... Does he know a lot about comics? Can he possibly That's know well so much comic. about so many different mediums, yeah. you know? Like, he fucking... It, it, he, he just does... He does analysis of such a broad variety of subjects, and he always gives this impression like he's known about it forever. Like he's been a fan of it since he was in high school. You know, like well, everything. Yeah, yeah, I do. I, you want to I, achieve, I feel so like maybe him. it has to do with his writing style. Like he's able to write it in yeah. a way to where it comes off correctly. Whereas Idea important. Channel, I remember uh, in his Kill La Kill video, he was talking about like the names of certain things in Kill La Kill, and he was saying, you know, it, they could have been named that because maybe they had their like play on words with other words in the Japanese language, and he listed all these things, yeah. and I'm like. I made a comment, like, dude, yeah, that you obviously only know that by looking at it on Wikipedia, yet you wrote it as though you came to that conclusion the, on your own. That was very that, strange. See, and I, that's a good example, because what made that so plebby to me is that that's every fucking anime. Everyone's named after puns. Like, that's just, yeah, like, yeah. that's, like, one <clears throat> of the most, like, J Japanese humor is, like, all puns. They love wordplay. They love kanji Gabe, you puns. were born to the wrong civilization. Like... Because so much of so much of how they how so much of how they title stuff is always that like it's a play on the way the characters are read because almost every character can be read multiple ways so they have all these fucking wordplay gags that never are fucking yeah, translatable. Yeah. Well, yeah, for me it was just weird because he was saying it as though he came to that conclusion, but there's no way he didn't just read that on Wikipedia. But he read. I, I was like, I've never seen that before in any video. I, yeah, I got you. He's I got shit. you. He's I shit. have seen that before like in videos. It's called Vadi Vidya, where everything he says is recollected information uh, from forums. That's true. That's true. <laughs> but uh, but yeah. Well, he does a nice job presenting. Yeah, I don't yeah, mind he does. him. I like he does. his channel, but uh, yeah, he has been very widely accused of uh, plagiarism. You know what's cool is that all this time we're talking about plagues, we're talking about patricians, and I'm watching a Super Mario 64 speedrun. The most patrician thing, if, depending on how far you want to get into it. I am watching a speedrun of an entire alternate level map of entirely different levels that someone is speedrunning. Super Mario 64, super patrician. Go watch Panic Coic 2012. Super patrician 64. Actually, you got yeah. me. Yeah, yeah man. That brings me to another thing about like what I was <clears throat> just describing, though, is like I don't know about you guys, but I feel like I will never in my entire life will I be the guy who knows the most about anything. Like, yeah. there's just I, no subject on which I will be the I mean, out of, like, expert. the 7 billion people, it's exceedingly unlikely that right. you will be. Just because... You know? I don't even think Panacoic is the most knowledgeable about SM64. It's just he's the only one with that level of knowledge who makes videos. Right. Like, I think yeah. there's always going to be... 
and I'm I'm always jealous of those people because like as much as I love Kaon and could talk about <clears throat> it all day, like I don't know I couldn't tell you the episode names even, you know, like and even with yeah. when I was into My Little Pony and I could do that, like I didn't watch them over and over again. I couldn't tell you yeah, all the somebody details, out there you know? does. Somebody yeah, does. There's definitely someone who I, could recite yeah. every episode of the show to you. you I know? think there was a period where a couple of years ago where I was Probably in the top 500 globally of South Park knowledge <laughs> and like everything about it. Like, right. I could tell you things, but that's I haven't updated my knowledge you in know, like, like five years. You know, like the second time I now, watched so. the South Park movie, it was with a like my brother's friend, and he had his older brother who was like 16 or 17 at the time, and he was literally word for word reciting the movie as we were watching it because he had seen it so hmm. many times he had memorized now, it. Now see that's that uh, that's fine. You can do that if you want. I just I don't really feel the need to get into that cuz yeah, I no, know I don't either. I, I feel this yeah. But I, I'm just I'm much interested I'm, when I watch a show, I'm interested in like what I can get out of it intellectually, right. you know? Well, yeah, I think there's something more to, than just rote memorization. Like, I feel like I may have been one of the top people it's in terms of, like, cool skill. being it's able cool to understand trick, but... South Park in yeah. certain ways. Like, like after watching, like, every interview, I was able to figure out exactly why their production cycle is so hectic. It's because they, yeah, uh, back cool. in the day, they could never get around to writing an episode until they had no time left. They just kept procrastinating. Mm. There's not a single interview that says this, but I watched all of them until I was able to piece it together. That's why, by the way. That's, That's cool. why it's done like that. It's just back in the day, they could never stop procrastinating until they had no time left. And so they would just come up with whatever was in the news and write that. <laughs> that was That's why they made it like that. And they just stuck with it because it was a successful model. Right. But no one knows that but me. And now every everyone listening to this podcast. <laughs> I, well, cool. I, I, I think my envy of those people is just that I think, to me, you can never analyze something too much. Because at some point you get to where, like, the timber, t- timbre, timbre of someone's voice, Tom- timbre. timbre, like the timbre of their the way that they, their inflection when they say that one line of dialogue and, like, why it makes you feel something that they said it that way. Like, you know, that could be an interesting thing. Mm-hmm. Or, like, why yeah, I just watched this the- color <clears throat> being used in this scene is, like, why it makes you feel something and... Uh, you know, and every, well, we can ignore the color of the curtains in the just background. Make shit up, right? And, Again, know, that... watch Panicoic. He just came out with a video about Monty Mole spawning. <gasps> oh my God! Did he do another commentated? No, he has this other channel called Pan and Keok because he doesn't want to do narration that much. It takes too long, so don't ask him, or shout else. Out, he, shout he, out to the least plebe man in the world, Pan and Keok. Yeah. That guy. Yeah. I just, I just, I would, ki- I'll kill everyone for another fucking uh, uh, Rolling yeah. Rocks 0.5. Yeah, I asked him about that. I asked him on a comment, and he made me feel like an idiot, because he was like, you know, people ask me about this constantly. That's why I have this alt channel where I put out quick videos. If people start asking me for commentations on my quick videos, I'm going to have to make a secret channel. <laughs> what, does he feel fucking just, threatened by people wanting more content? Sequel? Man, fuck this guy. I, I take it back. He's a pleb. <laughs> I fucking hate but him. But anyway, like, if you guys don't know who we're talking about, he's the guy who said, but first we got to talk about about multiple universes. He's my favorite or, meme. That guy. Parallel yeah. universes. Him and, yeah, uh, that guy. and uh, what is it? Uh, TJ Henry Yoshi. Yoshi. Yeah. yeah that's the best meme best, ever. Yeah, that was the best like... Now there's a fucking pleb. An <laughs> yeah, apress is, is only an pleb. apress. You can't say Henry it's only a half. Yeah. <laughs> you can't say it's a half a press. It's just an apress. <laughs> you don't fucking yeah, man. get it, guys. Well, hear me out. Pre- did, <laughs> Proceeds did, did to guys, parallel universe Did I tell travel? you guys that there's, there's like, there's, I saw a screenshot of TJ Henry Yoshi, yeah. like, commenting on that video. Oh, yeah, yeah, people, I, like, yeah that was a video that he did. him in the comments and being like, you fucking idiot, you're so wrong. He got so blown out that he went and commented on that video, like, dude, I'm sorry I was wrong, yeah, your video's great, that. please make, please keep making great content. Did I, I, I tracked down that original comment on that video long ago and respond to it, just like, TJ, you're a fucking legend, I love you. <laughs> dude, he's awesome! Yeah, no. With his cool, like, Ace Attorney shades or whatever. Yeah, on that mask. orange Yoshi, he's the coolest. I love you, Henry. Shout out, right, so do we have any Anything else to say about plebs? You know, that's really the perfect example of pleb and patrician. TJ, Henry, <laughs> Yoshi, and Pan and Koak. That's, you know, that's a good place yep. to end it. Yeah, I, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, a legendary dance mm-hmm. of two between two lovers that will last. You know, it'll be repeated. It'll be repeated again and again yes. throughout history. That's I, right. I, I just, I can't believe it. Super Mario sixty four. This, this alternate level universe is like so much better than the actual game. It's blowing my mind that I'm watching this. Holy cow! All right. Well, that's cool. Well, I guess that's a good place to wrap it up. Let's say goodbye, folks. Bye. Goodbye. Goodbye.